Today I wanna to walk you through how to do all of the lowercase letters with your paintbrush. So let's jump in, we'll talk about supplies and then we'll start lettering. All right, the supplies I have are my watercolor dot card. I have some of my tracing paper and my workbook, my water, um, a ceramic plate. I've noticed that's been better to mix my paints on and my paintbrush. So let's jump in. All right, so I'm going to page three of the workbook. That's where the lowercase alphabet begins. And I'm gonna put a piece of my tracing paper over the top. And I like to move my tracing paper down so that I don't waste any of it. And I've also got my paper slanted. So this is um, perpendicular to my body right now. Um, and I am right-handed, so I'm gonna turn my paper this way as I am lettering. If you are left-handed, you would wanna turn your paper this way as you're lettering, and that will just make it a little bit easier to get those angle lines that we're going for. So the first letter is the letter A. So I'm gonna load up my paintbrush, and we're gonna go for it. Remember, we're gonna hold about here, um, and you can hold at 45 degree angles, or you can hold a little bit more upright, whatever is most comfortable for you. So I'm going to start with the letter A. It starts with an O form and an under turn. So first I'm going to do the O form. I'm going to start at the two o'clock position, work around. Heavy pressure to light pressure to get that O form. And then I'm going to do an under turn. And I feel like I got a little bit too much paint on my brush. Next, we're going to try a B. This one is going to be a long downstroke with that reverse O form. So we're gonna start here in the bottom left corner and we're gonna work up and around, start applying heavy pressure, back to thin pressure. We can lift up our brush and then we'll add a stylized upstroke. Next is C. This one's based on the O form. So we're again, it's gonna start at the two o'clock position, work around, start to add pressure, then release pressure and light the rest of the way up. You notice I kind of had to stop there and reposition my brush. And so that's a little bit why going more upright can help, but don't be afraid if it's like, eh, this isn't gonna work. Just pick up your brush, reposition, and then keep going. Next is the letter D. This one is gonna, again, be an O form. And a downstroke and an underturn combined. E is going to be based on the O form. We're going to start halfway between the waistline and the baseline to do a small loop. Come up to the waistline, heavy pressure, and come back around. There's no shame in tracing. So tracing is actually really great for lettering. So don't feel bad to trace to help your hand get familiar with these strokes and these letters. So for an F, this is going to be a stylized upstroke into an ascending loop and a descending loop and an upstroke. And the example that I have in the workbook is stylized. It's a little bit shorter here, but that's okay. So you can trace that exactly or you could make your descending loop a little bit larger. G is going to be an O form and a descending loop and an upstroke. H, long downstroke, and this is our first compound curve. And we just want to make sure that middle part is thicker than the other side, so add a second layer if you need to. An I is going to be an underturn, and then we dot the I. J is a descending loop with an upstroke, and then dot the I. Next is the letter K. This one is going to be a long downstroke, a small reverse O form, and kind of an underturn. But with this one, we want it to be coming more kind of diagonally right here than the underturn actually is. L is going to be an ascending loop combined with an underturn, and you can do that all in one motion. M is going to be a downstroke overturn, compound curve. And N is very similar, downstroke and compound curve. The letter O, 
This one is going to be an O form and that comma dot. So comma dots are really the connectors. They connect to the next letter. P is a long downstroke, a reverse O form, and then an upstroke. So that one's very similar to what we had going on in the B, except instead of it being above, going to the ascender line, it's going to the descender line. Next is Q. This one is going to be an O form, a descending loop that's reversed or reflected, so it's pointing that direction instead of the other direction, and then an upstroke. Oops, I'm missing my paper. So R is um, an S, or called outlier letters. So they have portions of their letters that aren't made up of the basic strokes. So for the letter R, it's going to be an upstroke and into an underturn. It's this kind of stroke right here that's unique. So again, it's an upstroke like that. And you're using heavy pressure this whole side right here. S is similar that we're going above the waistline and we're using heavy pressure to create a little bowl and then we come up with the upstroke. Let's turn the page over. We'll get a new piece of tracing paper and we'll finish out these last few letters. So next is T. T is gonna be a downstroke and an underturn combined and what's called a crossbar. Crossbars are on lowercase t's, capital A's, and capital H's. Next is U, so that's going to be two underturns together. V is going to be a compound curve with an underturn. And W is an underturn, underturn, comma dot. And we've got three more. X is also an outlier letter. So it's like a compound curve, but we're cutting off the beginning and the end. So like this. So instead of starting here, we'll just start a little bit higher up. And then you go across. It's kind of like a crossbar. Then we have Y, which is an underturn and a descending loop. And Z this style of a Z is also considered an outlier. It's not really, it has a downstroke in it. These little horizontal lines aren't really based on a basic stroke. So that is all of the lowercase letters. Please let me know what questions you have about these specific letters. I'd love to answer them for you. And thanks for watching.